Who who jumps let's out start, to you the most? Let's start. I'm going to start with the guy I think makes the most sense for this job, but I don't think AM is going to hire him. Is Jeff Trailer? Yeah, I knew that's what you said. I, I think Jeff <laughs> Trailer makes a ton of sense because he, for one thing, Jimbo has done a really good job of recruiting and recruiting nationally. And I think he's done a good job of getting some of the top guys in the state. But one thing that he did early in his tenure was that he fractured relationships a little bit with the high school coaches early on. Yeah. Uh, he worked to you, kind you of and I, by the way, you, you and I, you and I did a Texas recruiting confidential, I think two years ago mm -hmm. and where we just surveyed in like, like 20 Texas high school coaches for what they thought. Everybody loves Jeff trailer in the state. Mm -hmm. He's a former Texas high school coach, but the Texas A&M reaction was a bit mixed because there's some things he did. So explain that. Yeah. So I think when Jimbo first got here, he, one of the things he did early on was he met with a seven on seven coach or something early on and took a picture of him on social media. And it's, it really was not a big deal to be honest with you, but Texas high school coaches here are very territorial and, and they took that as an affront. It's like, oh, the first day on the job, you're going to go see that guy. And that same day, by the way, Jimbo went and saw Gary Joseph, who's state championship winning coach at Katy High School, very well known, very well respected, uh, had a power position at, in the top of the Texas High School Coach Association for a while. Uh, so he went and saw them both on the same day. And I think that the Texas High School coaches thought, well, you're putting that seven on seven coach on the same plane with the high school coach, state championship high school winning coach. And so there was a little bit of a consternation about that. And so political, uh, there's, such a, a, there's a way of like a politics thing it, to happen. It is. It absolutely is. And there, yeah. there's also a level of recruiting here where everything goes to the high school coach. That's kind of how it goes. And that, it's not truly how it goes anymore, but it's still how the high school coaches would like it to go. Mm -hmm. And Jimbo kind of just did, does whatever he needs to do to get the players, which to his credit, it worked in a big way, but I think some of those relationships, and it depends on who you talk to. I think we talked to some high school coaches who really spoke highly of Jimbo, and you talk to some high school coaches who are like, yeah, I don't trust that guy. And I think Jeff Trailer would help repair some of that because Jeff is a former Texas high school coach, and he's beloved by the, all those in the state, like you said. But also, you look at what he's done at UTSA, they have a really good recruiting operation. They don't have a ton of resources. They're punching above their weight class in the American right now. They're they're still undefeated, even with all the injuries they've had and struggles they've had. And I think you give him the resources that AM has, and I think he would absolutely kill it. Now, I don't think Texas AM will go that way because I don't I, I think the idea of hiring the coach from UTSA is probably more than Texas AM leadership can get its head around when you're paying yep. seventy seven million dollars to tell Jimbo Fisher yep. why. So I yep. don't think they're going to go that route, but I think he'll be in the mix. And if they were to hire him, I think he'd make a ton of sense. Yep. He is beloved in the state. He knows everybody. He knows how to do all the political machinations and everything like that. You get that guy in front of the Texas Anum donors, like it's done, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Can you convince people, Hey, we're going to spend $75 million really more like 80, 90 to get rid of all the coaches to hire the coach at UTSA. It's a mm -hmm. tough sell. That's it's that's sell. that's that's the thing. That's that's the thing. Now I'll give you two other names that you not that it's really right, want, but but, uh, I'm but thinking it's of. A sell. yeah, yeah. Two other names is Mike Elko. I think absolutely stands out here because a he's done a great job at Duke so far in his yep. two years there. Again, fewer resources, much tougher situation to recruit than Texas. A he, he's he's fifteen and he took over a three win team. He's fifteen mm -hmm. and seven. He went nine and three last year. Beat Clemson to uh to start this year and he coached at AM for 2018 to 2021 defense coordinator recruited mm -hmm. a lot of those really good players that they've got on their team or that they had on their team um he knows the place now the question yes. i would have is do, do you think you can fire jimbo fisher to hire one of his assistant coaches i mean he he is he was there for the four best years of the jimbo fisher era you know mm -hmm. that, that everything has kind of gone downhill since he's been gone that's not to say that that his departure is the reason for that. That's there's way more factors that go into the decline here the last two years than Mike Elko's departure, but it certainly didn't help. And they had one of the best defenses in the country when he was here. And shoot, they have one of the best defenses in the country now. They, they had a really rough year last year with DJ Durkin in his first year. But Elko knows the place, knows how to recruit the place, and mm. understands the culture. And I think he would be well received by the fans because people generally do like Mike Elko, people who spend time around him 
he's he's a personable guy. He and he's a really good football coach. And so I think he would make a ton of sense. And the other name that that stands out to me on this list is Dan Lanning at Oregon. Yep. I think Dan brings the kind of juice when you talk about young, energetic oh, yeah. guy that's in the antithesis of what Jimbo Fisher is at this point. Yeah. Dan, you, you think about that speech that he gave before the Colorado game. Like, yep. I think you, you I think A and M fans would run through a wall for Dan Lanning. And yep. the question is, does he want to get back to the SEC? What does he think of Oregon going to the Big Ten? If this is a chance to make a move, Dan Lanning, in my opinion, is a home run hire. Oh, and by the way, would bring probably bring, I would assume, his director of player personnel, Marshall Malikow, <laughs> bring it back right back to Texas A&M. Yeah. And Marshall was part of the number putting that number one recruiting class together when they signed it in 2022. So I think you could, and, and again, he's been at Georgia. Landing has understands the lay yep. of the land in the SEC, and what the you have to do. Defense and coordinator I, there. Defensive coordinator there. And I think an understanding of what it takes to win and recruit at a high level in the SEC is absolutely paramount in this job, especially when you consider who's coming. Texas and Oklahoma, who are both programs that also recruit at a high level. So now yeah. you got you got to have guys who can win those battles on the recruiting trail because, as you know, when you go up against Nick Saban, when you go up against Kirby Smart, when you go up against all these other dudes in the SEC, it is cutthroat, and you've got to have guys that can win those battles. And Lanny has done a terrific job recruiting so far. So if if I were thinking what A and M fans probably look at this list, I would think Lanning probably is your number one if you're an AM fan. Uh it, Kalen DeBoer is an interesting one that you threw out. I, I'd be interested to see how people feel about him. He's been terrific at Washington so far. But I think Elko makes a lot of sense. And like I said, trailer would be a dark horse in, in my opinion. Lanning home run. Absolutely. Well, one of my favorite things, stories I like to tell about him. The first story I did here at the Athletic was I traveled to Memphis in 2017 fall camp and, and spent a day with the program around Mike Norvell, who was the head coach. Kenny Dillingham was on the staff and Ryan Silverfield, the current coach was on the staff and Dan Lanning was the linebackers coach. And I sat in on a meeting with them. And as players are walking into this linebackers room, Dan Lanning's holding out his arms like this, like in a circle. And he says, everybody drop your feelings into this bag because what <laughs> we're going to stay in that room, not to be taken personally, you know, and he's, this was he was in his young 30s then he's 37 now but it was an energetic meeting he wasn't just demeaning everybody it was just a lot of energy mm -hmm. and that comes through in everything he does from the way he recruits to the way he coaches you know we he's i think 19 and 4 at Oregon three of those losses have come by one score in which he went for a fourth down that would have basically kind of won the game and they didn't get it so like he is a very aggressive guy he knows how to lead at the highest level of college football because he saw it at Alabama. He saw it at Georgia. He's doing the same thing at Oregon. Now, the big question, two big questions about Dan Lanning in Oregon. One, does he want to leave? He's got Nike resources there. you got a lot there. They're in the Big Ten now. You don't got to worry about the Pac-12 and all that stuff. So there's a lot to like about what he's doing in Oregon. The second part he is a $20 million buyout, which he just signed <laughs> earlier this year. And when you sign that contract that he got, and when you agree to a $20 million buyout, you generally do that if you're not planning to leave and you're mm. trying to show that you're not leaving. Mm. However, Texas A&M, <laughs> if you're already spending $90 million to get rid of your coaches, what's another 20? What's another 10 for his salary? <laughs> this is probably going this to cost so more insane. than... A, this is probably going to cost more than $100 million for Texas A&M to do all of this change. Now, that seems like a lot of money, but we also saw SMU a couple weeks ago announcing, hey, we just raised $100 million in a week because we're mm -hmm. going to the ACC and we need some boosters mm -hmm. to help. Texas, SMU has some big money boosters. Texas A&M has a whole lot more. So you can expect that they're going to be able to throw a whole lot of money at anybody. That's $20 million about for Dan Lanning is probably doable. The question is, does <laughs> Dan Landing want to do it? <laughs>